We have finally got positive news coming out about Manchester United today and two or three positive stories to come out, not just one. After what has been a horrible week of controversies, negative story, negative story, Arsenal loss, everything. You know, I thought that offside goal, natural goal was going to be the worst thing to happen this week, but it just got worse and worse and worse. Things do look up. Look on the up for Manchester United. Mayno sets him back from injury. Mason Mount sets me back from injury. Other players returning from injury. Obviously, we've got the likes of Hoyland coming back into the team as well. So, we're going to get into the positive stories. We're going to get into the players returning from injury. We've also got news on the Manchester United takeover to get into as well, which we'll get into in a second. And then we're going to talk about Ten Hag and Jadon Sancho, who are set to hold clear the air talks today to kind of clear what is going on between them and hopefully they will make up but the first story as you can see on my screen is that Kobe Mainu could be back for, for, before the Man United versus Brighton game and I think Kobe Mainu coming back with Amrabat coming back with Hoyland coming back in the team I made a video on this these three players I believe will be highly impactful now Kobe Mainu is only an 18 year old so I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on him and we shouldn't be putting a lot of pressure on him to change our season but he played a massive role in pre-season he was almost starting over Casemiro. He started versus Arsenal. He started versus Real Madrid. Ten Hag rates this guy highly. Ten Hag has told this guy to study this, this and that. Ten Hag has big plans for this guy. This is why we let Sidanik Ball go. Kobe Mainu, I think it's going to be more difficult just because he's not been here right at the start of the season. But Ten Hag has plans for Kobe Mainu. He might not play right away coming back from injury. He might be on the bench a little bit. I think he'll probably get his first game in that Carabao Cup game coming up against Crystal Palace. But I think a big season is ahead for Kobe Mainu at Manchester United. It's very clear that Tenor rates him highly. And I think him coming back, I think he's going to be used in the midfield. I think the reason that Tomine was told that he could leave is because Tenor actually views Mainu higher than Tomine. Another player that is set to be back is Mason Mount. There's a small chance that Mount could be back in the squad for the match against Brighton, but he's targeting return for the Bayern Munich match, which is going to be really, really important because we saw with Ericsson versus Arsenal, he can't always quite match the tempo in those big matches. That's something Ericsson seems to struggle with, whereas Mason Mount obviously can cover the ground and keep up with the energy that Bayern Munich are going to offer. I think Mason Mount will be important in that game. So now we've got Amrabat, Mount and Mayno added to our current midfield situation. I think Man United are in a little bit of a better position going forward. Now, I really hope that we do get a win versus Brighton and Bayern, but it is two difficult games that I think we will struggle in. But I want to get into some takeover news. Um, this came out from Ben Jacobs and Give Me Sport. And it said that the Man United takeover is still active as a big update emerges from Old Trafford. And Ben Jacobs has had a source close to the takeover. And he's gone into a little bit of detail on the takeover that I wanted to cover for you as well. So this is what Ben Jacobs told uh, Give Me Sport. He said the sale process is still active, according to sources close to it. And the group's all intimate as well. But they're yet to hear anything. So we know that the Glazers have taken their time to assess options. And we should also point out that an active process can also result in no sale. That is one possibility, but all options remain on the table. So essentially, the first paragraph, he's just saying with the takeover, all options remain on the table. The people are still in talks. But yeah, there's still a possibility they could stay. But it's still ongoing. He was said the groups, as in Sergio Macri from Qatar and maybe someone else secretly, you never know, are waiting to hear back from the Glazers and the Group. The Glazers are assessing whether they think there is value in selling the club now as a collective six or possibly as a four and a two with Joe and Avram staying on. Even though we saw a couple of days ago a record fall for a single day in the stock price and the market value of the club had over 550 million shaved off it. Those of that um, close to the seller still indicate that very little has changed and that an active process uh, and that it's an active process and that there are ongoing negotiations still taking place with multiple groups. So essentially what Ben Jacobs is suggesting is basically the, the problem is the conflict is that basically four of the Glazers siblings are like, let's just sell the club to Qatar, get it over with. Um, Abraham and Joe were like, yeah, but we, if we sell to Sir Jim, we could stay for a few years. The club could be worth more. Um, Abraham and Joe were like, oh, wait, why don't we hold on to this if we get any more money? So they're weighing up whether they sell to Qatar and they all leave or if Abraham and Joe can find a way to stay. Um, but I think Abraham and Joe will only find a way to stay if they think they will make more money that way. And with the fact that it, the price and the share price went down 550 million because of a rumour they're staying, I think the share price would go down a lot if they stayed, that it would take a while to get it back up, especially considering that Jim Ratcliffe isn't going to clear the debt or doesn't have the money to, I think, really elevate Man United to the very top, which would get the share price up. So I think it doesn't make sense for the Glazers to stay with Sir Jim Ratcliffe because I don't think the club will be worth more. 
Um, but that's what the glazers are weighing up. Oh, if we take Surge and Microsoft and we stay another two years and then sell the remaining shares, you know, potentially then that's when we could make more money out of the club because we believe the club will be worth more in a few years. But that's what's relying on Surge and Ratcliffe making the club big, making the club good again. And honestly, I think Surge and an improvement on the Glazers, but I don't think he's great. I kind of described it as if you're going to Spain from London, the Glazers is you have to walk all the way to Spain. So the Ratcliffe is you get a Ryanair flight and Qatar is you get a first class Emirates flight. You want the first class Emirates flight. If you'd rather get the Ryanair flight than walk there, it's better than the Glazers. But compared to what you're going to get from Qatar, he's not good enough, Sir Jim. Um, so that seems to be what's going on. They seem to be kind of figuring out, is he going to go to Sir Jim? Is he going to go to Qatar? They can't seem to be basically choosing. Now, Ben Jacobs said this, which was quite interesting. He said, now at this stage of the process, radio silence is very normal. And if the Glazers decide to move in the direction of any preferred option, whether no sale, one of the groups, an outright sale, minority investor, it becomes very commonplace for other groups that are potentially not the preferred option to feel like the process has gone quiet, which is why I think they're getting a lot of reports about people frustrated in limbo. It's a very, it's very similar to a job interview in that respect. If you've got eight candidates and after loads of job interviews, you decide a preferred candidate or in one case, a preferred approach. And then the other seven candidates are probably just kept waiting for a while until you obviously finalise the deal for the one candidate if it was a job interview. So everything's about just making sure you go for your preferred option, but you keep the other people there in limbo, quiet, in case something falls through and you need your second preferred option. Um, he essentially said you're never going to tell anybody else that it's over and what direction you're moving in until you show hand, until you're categorically sure what the approach is for you. So basically saying, you know, the people in the dark about the takeover aren't going to know anything until the Glazers are 100% certain on the decision they're taking. So you're always going to be in the dark and there's always only going to be one or two people that know what's going on. So if the Glazers were basically decided it was going to be Sir Jim and would talk to Sir Jim. They wouldn't tell Qatar until they were 100% certain they were going with Sir Jim. It was also said by uh, Ben Jacobs that you're also going to get gamesmanship because the Glazers may want to sell a Sir Jim or, or Shake Your Sim, but um, they have not reached the price point, which means all becomes games about getting the numbers up. And I think that's why there's currently a lot of frustration in reports. And I think Ben Jacobs basically summarises and said, I think basically the delays is gamesmanship. Um, I think with what's going on with the takeover, it's still ongoing, but essentially, what is going on is it's being delayed because of Glazer Games. Glazer, Glazers want more money. That is, for me, the essential reason behind the delays. I think that is exactly what's going on. And then, of course, I think, you know, there's a squabble going on with the Glazer siblings. You know, four Glazer siblings just sell it to Qatar. Joe and Avram want more money. Could we make more money out of Sergio Macbeth? There's basically just a little bit of squabbling going on between the Glazer siblings. Now, I do want to get into the Sancho story, people. There has been some news coming out on Jane and Sancho and just more so how Eric Tenog feels on this whole Jane and Sancho situation. Eric Tenog thinks the whole situation is essentially blown out of proportion and he basically thought he was doing it for Sancho's own good and they're going to hold some make-up talks this week which is good. I want it to be a positive week, I want it to be a positive vibe. It was said by the Mirror and I think this is probably one of the best leaks that's come out on Sancho and Tenog's situation because I think a lot of the other leaks that have come out have just been an attack on Tenog or attack on Sancho and, and trying to create, you know, all Sancho causes dressing room problems, this and that. Whereas I think this leak is quite honest and it just says that Eric Tenog feels the situation with Jane and Sancho has been blown out of proportion, believes um, it can be resolved to allow Sancho to prove he can come back into the United First Team. Tenog saying basically he thinks the whole situation is blown out of, process, blown out of uh, proportion and Tenog still believes that Sancho can come back into the first team, they can make it up and all of that. Um, it was also said by the Mirror that Eric Tenog has been shocked by the way his row with Jadon Sancho has escalated. Uh, apparently Tenog shocked that Sancho went out and put that statement out and that he's not backing down and how the leaks have gone out. He's shocked that this little row that he's had with Sancho is escalated that much. You know, he dropped Garnacho, he dropped Rashford for other issues that never escalated. He dropped Sancho, it's massively escalated and, and then Tenog seems to be quite surprised by that and obviously he's not happy because Sancho is still standing strong for statement. A few other things was also said by Malik of the Mirror. And one of the interesting things was that sources close to Tenog claim that Tenog hopes Sancho's omission and subsequent explanation of his decision would lay down a challenge to Sancho that he'd upset. It was said from Tenog's side that Tenog actually dropped Sancho and said, you're not training hard enough as a challenge that Sancho would upset, something to give Sancho motivation to train, and train even harder and get back into the team. Obviously, Sancho feels like a scapegoat. He thinks he should be starting over Anthony and all of that. But I think Tenog is like, I know Sancho can be a really good player. He showed glimpses of it pre-season. He's shown glimpses of it at United. We, just, we, knew, we knew what he could do at Dortmund. I think Sancho could be an unbelievable player, but he's not, you know, doing enough in training. And he's not 
got a big enough challenge at United. Sancho needs a big kick up the arse. And Tenag almost saw this as Sancho's big kick up the arse, which is maybe motivating to be like, I'm going to improve that Tenag wrong. I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to work even harder and prove that Tenag wrong. But instead, Sancho went to social media and whined, whereas I think Tenag wanted Sancho to do really kind of what Van Bissaka did in that whole situation as well. But anyway, it was finally said by Malik of the Mirror, which is an interesting thing, and we spoke about this in the live stream a few days ago, that Tenag would not have stood in the way if United had been able to agree a deal to send Sancho to the Saudi Pro League, which is a little bit worrying. You know, if, you, if Man United got 50 million for Sancho to send him to the Saudi Pro League, Tenag would have just said yes, even though he wouldn't be able to replace him until January. And even though we know Manchester United would probably sign a lone player from Bournemouth to replace Jadon Sancho, because that's what Manchester United do. Tenog seemed very open to sending Sancho to the Saudi Pro League. So it's very obvious that you need to make up this whole situation and all that. And I think it's pretty obvious that Sancho's Man United career, I don't think will be much longer unless they make up and Sancho starts performing well. But it's such a frustrating situation that's been blown out of proportion, not helped by the numerous leagues. But let's hope Sancho and Tenog make up talks go well this week. Let's hope we get some positive updates on the takeover and let's hope for no more injuries. Apparently, Amabaz's injury isn't serious, which is good. Thank you for watching. Smash the like, smash the subscribe. See you next time. And uh, bye.